Greetings everyone. I'm Karen Jane Casey and this is Turn to God with Karen. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. In Turn to God with Karen, my message for listeners is to encourage overcoming as we face unwanted life circumstances. We can always turn to God, whether we're brokenhearted, overwhelmed, and when we're filled with gratitude. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, King of the universe, because your loving kindness is better than life, our lips will praise you. You are our strength and our refuge. We are filled with gratitude and humility at the miracles that you've worked in our lives. We cast our cares on you. We fear no evil because you are always with us. We pray faithfully and we strive to obey you consistently. So as we submit to you, Lord, we believe that you answer our petitions in your perfect will and your perfect timing. We ask that you save, heal, and protect our loved ones, our friends, and our acquaintances, even this country, because we know with God all things are possible. Please forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who forgive sin against us. Thank you for your unconditional love, your mercy, and your compassion. Your grace comes through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's topic is about discipline. And according to the definition on the internet, discipline is the practice of training people to obey rules or a code of behavior, and that's by using punishment to correct disobedience. Well, how many of us know this? For everything we sow in this world, we will also reap, whether it be consequences or rewards. And sometimes things happen that we don't sow into. Circumstances happen. Good things can happen to bad people and bad things can happen to good people. Sometimes we might ask ourselves if it's good, if um, what we're going through is a test or is it discipline? We need to reflect on it because we will find, we will know what our sin is through our convictions. Unless, of course, it was obvious to us from the very beginning that we were doing something wrong. We would need to repent to confess and ask the Lord to forgive us, and he will forgive. In John 1, verse 9, if we confess our sin, oh, that's 1 John 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then we walk away from that wrongdoing. It may mean to walk away from a relationship that because it was encouraging us into harmful, evil ways. We can choose a different path. When we look at how we raise our children, and we love our children, then we can better understand how a loving Heavenly Father would and should reprimand and discipline us, His children. How can a child learn right from wrong and develop their core values, have a moral compass if they have no consequences for what they say or for what they do? How, how can they grow into wonderful adults that we hope they will become if we don't show them direction in their path? They can't become wonderful adults if we don't show them the way. And it includes tough love. That's what prepares us for be, that's what prepares us for becoming an adult. We can relate to the statements that God loves those he disciplines. If he didn't love us, then he would have no reason to care how we mature or if we mature. It's a natural law, isn't it? Adults do face consequences for their bad decisions. Whether they realize it or not, even if they go for a long, long period of time before it catches up with them. We don't want to mislead our children then to believe that they face nothing for what they do and what they say. 
When we're disciplined by the Lord, chastened, chastened, or rebuked by Him, it's very important how we react, how we respond to it. We're not supposed to become resentful or angry, but to learn from it. In several scriptures, we're told that we should not despise our discipline. Rather, we should be zealous, enthusiastic, eager to repent of whatever we did to bring it, it, to, bring it to us. We have the choice whether to love the instruction that brings us knowledge or to hate the reproof that be, and be brutish, barbaric, ignorant, wicked. About our children, are we preparing them for adult life so that they can thrive and be successful? So they can be happy people? Proverbs has a lot to say about raising our children. Proverbs 22, 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline, and that means correction administered with godly wisdom and loving kindness, shall drive it far from him. I said that with emphasis because back in the childhood days for me, many, many years ago, when physical corporal punishment was considered good, and people even looked at the Bible where it referred to spare the rod and spoil the child, well, it was a rough time for kids. Lots of child abuse happened. Parents would whip or beat their child sometimes even while they were angry. But I sincerely believe the scriptures on this point were meant to be symbolic of administering correction, not literally to use a rod. It appears folks are looking at this differently now. Thank, thank goodness. <laughs> Proverbs 29, 15. When a child is corrected, they receive wisdom. But when the child is left to his own, it will bring his mother to shame. Proverbs 13, 24. Just as God loves those he corrects, a father who corrects his son loves his child. Proverbs 29, 17. And I'm, I'm reading that. Correct thy son and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto your soul. So I want to ask you this, do your children know Jesus? Do they hear about, hear you talking about Jesus? Do they see you behaving Christ-like in the home? Do you teach them age-appropriate Bible stories and lessons? Do they know the way to salvation, that it is through Jesus? God has a plan for our lives and he's given us as parents the duty to help the child to develop a sound foundation to build upon. We all see a pervasive problem these days, entitlement. This is children who feel themselves as inherently deserving, entitled to privileges or special treatment. And when parents feed into this, they're helping to create a mess when the child becomes an adult, because guess what? They still believe that they're inherently entitled, deserving, and that's not gonna happen. Likely, it's not, it's not gonna happen, and because they are not special to everyone, they'll be expected to do their own work or lose out. But are they gonna be equipped to do that? Emotionally? They may fail in their career path. They may fail in their relationships. We're not doing them any favors by skipping out on the discipline, by spoiling them. Because real life, when they become an adult, is not gonna be like that. There's another prong to discipline, self-discipline. Do you recall that self-discipline is one of the fruit of the spirit? It's a part of the love of God we receive when we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit is then in us, and He provides the fruit of the Spirit once we have God's grace through Jesus. 
Proverbs 25, 28, encourages self-discipline. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. In Hebrews 12, 11, the scriptures confirm that no chastening or chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous, well, we know that. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields peaceable fruit of righteousness for those who learn from it. So when we're being punished, disciplined for something, we have a choice how we are going to deal with it, how we're going to respond. I want to briefly share something from my own personal testimony that relates to this topic because maybe somebody needs to hear it. I am fully aware that the domestic violence that I suffered as an adult was the direct result of my own bad choices. Knowing the path that I, I should have taken, I was facing consequences for being a backslider. I was filled with humility and shame when I turned to God and I asked forgiveness for, for a rescue and for salvation. And once I asked, what was the response? God is love. He is forgiving. He forgave me and he will forgive you. Jeremiah 31, 3 through 4. Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Again, I will build you and you shall be rebuilt. And my, li my life was, was rebuilt after I turned to God from domestic violence. I, I changed from a unloved, hopeless victim to a loved child of God. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for your abundance of love, compassion, and mercy and grace through Jesus Christ, my Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed my podcast today. This is Karen Lacey, doing business as Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, domestic violence advocate, and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen every Monday morning at 630 and Abundant Living with Karen every Tuesday morning at 7. Both are Eastern Standard Time. You can download and listen anytime. Both of these podcasts are with Storm Talk 365 Radio. We're also available at iTunes, Twitter, and Alexa on Amazon. And it's hosted by iHeartRadio and Spotify. You can contact me in several ways. My website www.karenjanecasey.com C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y You can go to the website www.stormtalk365radio.com My Facebook fan pages match my podcast Turn to God with Karen and Abundant Living with Karen and I have an author page at amazon.com I strive to educate and encourage people to uh, conquer life's challenges. And I do this because I'm a survivor of domestic violence. And as I recovered, my gratitude motivated me to write books and to do podcasts so that others can gain tools to overcome their demons and to beat what's holding them back from enjoying life. My dear Rosa Jean, Mystery at Kansas Bay. Actually, all of my books are available at Amazon.com, Kindle, Create Space, and Barnes & Noble Nook. My email, and I hope that you will contact me, uh, give me any feedback you have, any suggestions, and that's KarenJaneCasey at gmail.com, C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. Trust in the Lord and do good. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Thank you, and God bless.